Hey everyone, it's George Kroos and we actually are starting this new series and you've seen a couple of these already and it's just basically three questions and hopefully there's some inspiring stories and just, you know, appreciating all the great educators out there. And so uh, thanks Katie Novak for doing this and you can actually watch our podcast uh, as well that, that we had published before. So Katie, the first question is, uh, who is one teacher that has inspired you and, you know, can be a teacher that taught you as a child to be one that you work with and why did they inspire you? So hands down, the best teacher I have ever had was Mrs. Paula Krause, who I had my senior year of high school. And the reason that I put her above all the other really great teachers I had is because she saw something in me that no one else did. And so in school, I was like a decent student, like kind of like C's get degrees type pathway. So, um, you know, I was well behaved and I turned in my work, but I never did really anything more than that. And so I was pretty much like a solid C plus, B minus student. And as a result, I was never in any higher level classes. Um, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, it was like very much the time of tracking. And I was always in like the lowest level. And um, that was until I ended up in Mrs. Krause's class my senior year. And she asked us just to draft a college essay. And she's like, you know, maybe college isn't in your plans, but I don't ever want you to regret like not knowing the process and knowing that it was an option for you to apply. So like you write an essay and then I'll help you. So I wrote this essay and uh, she held me after class. And I was like, why am I getting held after class? And she's like, oh my gosh, that essay was just so great. And you're just so capable. And I just, I can't allow you to waste like clearly all the potential that you have. And so I've actually called your parents and I made sure that you're gonna be in the honors class. And I was like, oh mm, no, like you clearly have the wrong person. Um, I'm not an honors student. Like I am like a CP2 like kind of gal. She's like, no, like you have so much potential. I can tell it in your writing. And she's like, don't worry about it. Like, I'm happy to spend lunch with you. Like my room is always open for extra help. Like you can do this work. And like something clicked where as soon as I got into this class with all these people who like really cared about the work and, and had these really amazing discussions, I was like, I'm totally capable of this. Um, and it changed kind of the trajectory of everything that I did afterwards. Um, I actually got waitlisted to University of New Hampshire. I didn't get into a state school um, until afterwards. And so I went to UNH, I was like, hands down, like I can do this, like I'm capable. I graduated in three and a half years got my master's, got my doctorate. And, um, you know, later in life, I was just thinking about like, what if I never had her? Like, what would have happened? And so when I wrote um, UDL Now and we did the second edition, I actually dedicated it to Mrs. Kraus and tried to track her down because I really wanted to take her out to dinner. So we're out to dinner and I give her the book and I'm like, oh, Mrs. Kraus, like, you have no idea how much you changed my life. And she's like, really? What did I do? And I'm like, oh, Mrs. Krause, <laughs> I wrote this college essay. And she's like, I actually remember that college essay. Like, I remember what you wrote it about. And I'm like, and then you put me in honors. And she's like, I don't remember that part. Like, what are you talking about? You don't remember that part. She's like, I put you in honors. I'm like, yes. Like it was one of the biggest pivotal moments of my entire life. Like you said I was capable and you put me in honors. She's like, oh, Katie, I thought everybody was an honors student. And one of the things that I was like really passionate about was like basically sharing with administration, anyone who you believe in can work at really high levels. And so every year I would like advocate for more and more students to take honors. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> right. But that's the teacher that I wanna be. Is she truly believed that everybody could do amazing work and they did. And so I've always kind of kept her in my mind as somebody I wanted to be like in my career. And that, 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 what is what great teachers often do is that they actually elevate and see things in kids before the kids see themselves and they you know help them believe it and so get on that path so i i love that answer and so the second question is uh talk about at a, a school administrator or, or district level administrator maybe one that you knew as a student or one uh that you worked with as a colleague and that you know really someone you looked up to and you know had a, had an impact on on what you do today so again, I work for a lot of really amazing administrators, but one of my favorite stories is when I first started teaching, um, and this like will show how young and vulnerable I was at the time. Um, but when I first started teaching, I was actually engaged to be married to someone who's not my current husband. And <laughs> I didn't know that. 
Um, yep, yep. We call him fiance number one at our house and my husband's <laughs> fiance number two. And we actually like went through this, like he ended up leaving me and it was this terrible breakup, like on the second day of school. And, you know, like wedding invitations, like wedding dress. And it's like, by the way, I'm with this other person. And like, again, in hindsight, beautiful, beautiful thing that happened to me. But I literally was like, I, I can't go to work. Like, I cannot go to work. I just found out that my fiance, who I'm supposed to be marrying, is with somebody else. I can't go to work. And I'll never forget this, that the principal of the district was also the superintendent. Um, it was in Big Bear, California, which is a pretty mm -hmm. small district. And I, I called and I was like hysterical. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do. I just found this out. And this is like my second day in the district. Um, and it's like, I, I can't go to work. And that woman went to Domino's Pizza, picked up some pizzas and came to my house. Aww. And literally like knocked at the door and was like, I am here for you, this is so hard. Like, it's all right, don't even worry about work. Like you're gonna get through this. And for me, like she didn't know me and I was just a kid. And the fact that she was like willing to just leave everything at the district to come and check on me meant everything. That, that's, you know, and what a great example of how when administrators take care of people, then the people will do amazing things for them. And I, when you first started telling that story, I'm like, I don't think you heard the question, but, <laughs> but you got there somehow. So. I, I, always I was like, I don't know if this is this, you're answering the same question. Okay. So the last question, uh, the 2020, 2021 school year no matter where you are in your career, everyone feels like a new teacher. Like it's just so new. And so I know this advice seems like it's, you know, this question is seems like it's pertinent only to a portion of the education uh, workforce, but I think it really is pertinent to everyone. You know, when you look back at your career and you look back at when you first started, what advice would you give to yourself as a beginning teacher? I think that it took me a really long time to recognize that I needed to carve out time that was disconnected from work. So when I first became a teacher, when I first became an administrator, I somehow equated like the hours of working with my commitment. And I just kind of bled through every day, every week, and there was no time to really focus on me. And I finally got to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm not doing work anymore on Friday nights or Saturdays, no matter what, like I have to carve out that time. And I wish that I could go back to myself to say like, there are no emergencies happening on a Saturday mm -hmm. that requires you to put work in front of your family, in front of your own mental health, in front of your own balance. And so my advice to anybody would be, you know, take some time whenever it is for me to this day, it's Friday night and Saturdays. And I do like to get caught up for the next week on Sunday night, but like there is nothing that's going to take me away from my Saturdays for me. And I think that everybody needs that time. Awesome. And so uh, I, I think that that question is not only good for, you know, teachers, but or that answer is not only good for teachers, but anyone. And I think so much more so in a time where people are feeling really stressed, overwhelmed, uh, more than I've ever seen in education. And I think it really is important to understand that th there's always going to be work to do the next day, but that doesn't mean you can't take care of yourself. So that was three questions with Katie Novak. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you have a wonderful day.